Alright, this is aligning and checking on the width and height of an object to make sure the, the size is correct and that the alignment is correct. There are many ways to help you align objects. One of which we've talked about in the introduction to the page designer is the grid. If you click on the grid, it will show you more lines to help you align objects. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see even better that there are many little lines, meaning pickles, this little box is a pickle, and you have six across and six down for each of the larger boxes that are aligned on your page data. Now, when you turn the grid on, it's going to force you to put everything uh, on a particular line. Whichever line is the closest, it's going to snap to it so that you will be aligned correctly. Okay, but you can check alignment. If you want an alignment all the way down the page, Click over in one of your rulers, hold it down, and drag over an align that will help you to align it. You can also click on the top one and bring it in. Now, this line that is vertical is a half pickup. In order to be able to align easy to it, You'd have to turn the grid off. Turn the grid off. There we go. Ah. When you scroll down, you'll be able to see the items that you're looking at. You can say, okay, well, I want to move this one over. You can do one of two things. You can actually use the mouse to drag it over, or you can switch to the arrow keys, which will allow you to move as well. It usually snaps at a certain amount. So you might have to use the mask to get it to the perfect spot you want. Now, another useful way to align is by clicking on an object. When you click on an object, it gives you two pieces of information. It gives you the x, y axis, and it gives you the width and height of the object. Now, this object is the exact same size as the object beside it. So if you'll notice the width and height, 1.03 and 1.34. When I click on the next object, it's the same size. Now, if I were to scroll up and look at the oval, the width and height of the oval is a different size. Now, when I increase the width, you'll see the number of the width go up. When I increase the height, you'll see the height number go up. If you want to make sure that no matter how much bigger you make it, the width and height stay equal to what they are, the proportions that are now, what you can do is you can tell it to lose it. And that no matter what, if you change the number here, it will change the height as well. If you change the height, it will automatically change the width. Notice on the green box to help you edit that the side adjustment has turned gray so that you can't touch them. That means that you can only use the corners. If you see something that has the gray on the side, and you need to be able to adjust it in that direction, go to the where it says hide the width and click the button that takes the link apart. Then you'll be able to adjust it in this direction. Now, for the height for the x, y axis, you see here that here the uh, x, y is 5.76. 2.33. In terms of the x-axis, it's the, the number that goes across the top. Here we have it in inches. You can actually change it to pixels, but we use inches as a default. So, 5.76. That's 5.5 inches. About 
75, slightly more than that, is where the edge of this box is located. Alignment along the X and Y axis. If you want to check, if you'll notice this item has an X axis of 5.76 and a Y axis of 2.33. Obviously, the X axis should not be the same for two items that are next to each other. But the Y axis, if you want them aligned, should be. So the Y axis of 2.33 should be the same. But you'll notice when you click on it, it is slightly off. And that would be noticeable when you print it. So you want to change it to make sure it is correct. So that Y axis of 2.33 is correct. Let's zoom back out. Another item that you can use for alignment within a page. When you click on a page, and then you go to the bottom. You'll see here it says one column, no guidelines. That means there are no guidelines and it's considered one column. If you want to equally space out the page and columns, you can tell it two columns and it will put a guideline down the exact middle of the page. If you need three columns, you will put two guidelines dividing the page in thirds. If you need it in fourth, you can read four by having three guidelines. If you need up to, you can get up to 20 columns. That's a lot of columns. I don't believe there's anything that we need to create 20 columns. But it will equally divide out the page into 20 spaces. Most likely, the most you may get to maybe 10 if you are working on a page, a portrait page, because you'll have to equally space out your pictures. Also, for the business section, one guideline down the middle is a very good idea, and then you can decide where a middle one would go. You can check with the actual numbers to see exactly where you should put the divider for half page. Because you want to make sure that you divide the pages equally for add. Let's say you have everything everything perfectly aligned down the left side, but you've decided that you don't want it sliced further. Instead you want to move all of this, still align the way you have it, but you want it aligned with the left margin. You can do one of two things. You can go up here to the edge, click and hold down to select everything, and then move it over. Or, we have aligned items in, as a group by selecting all the items and moving them over to the left. Now, if we wanted to select one item that was layered, as I have changed the item here to be layered, we cannot simply select the ones that we want by, by clicking and dragging to select them. You'll end up selecting everything, whether you want it or not. What you will have to do is click on an item, press shift, and click on the other item you want to move. Now, as you'll notice, only those two items are selected. So when I click and I drag, only those items will be moved, but they will stay together. And let's say I put them over here on the screen. Now, if you want to move everything together, again, you can select it all and move it all together. You can also, when you select everything, you can either copy here or right click and copy. If you paste it, it will paste it right next to where it goes. Paste. If you right click on a place in the page and you can paste, it will paste it. So that you can create 
a layered uh, bit of graphics and you can copy and paste it and not have to create it over and over again.